uh, external people are, are building other, other interfaces to run programs on the GPU. Um, you can find a lot of these on CUDA Zone at uh, NVIDIA.com. Uh, we've uh, gradually increased the, the level of features on the, the CUDA C compiler, uh, starting with, uh, we actually supported templates uh, way back. Uh, but now we're starting to, to add more and more features and, and getting pretty close to, uh, uh, to full C++. Um, we, now, uh, we now have, uh, under the 3.1 toolkit, which I have in parentheses May, because it actually was supposed to ship in May, but it shipped in June. And now it's out of beta. It's fully available. Um, I mentioned earlier function pointers. We now support uh, malloc and free recursion and printf. Uh, but you have to, again, be careful. You remember, if you do something in a thread, it happens 30,000 times. I don't honestly think you want the same thing printf 30,000 times. It's going to be really hard to debug that. But you can do it now, if you must. Question from UCLA. Okay. Uh, is printf only supported on uh, Fermi architecture? I. I didn't quite hear that. I'm sorry. Could you say it again? Oh, OK, I will try again. Is, uh, is printf uh, only supported on Fermi architecture? Yes. Printf is now supported. But is it only on the Fermi hardware, or if you upgrade your CUDA installation for older oh, hardware, okay. would it still work? I don't know. <laughs> uh, you should buy a Fermi anyway. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, famous race car driver uh, uh, Emerson Fittipaldi, who always used to say when he was interviewed, what is behind me is not important. <laughs> so so I c I'm sure you can find that out on the, on the uh, SDK. I'm sorry. I, uh, I'll look it up, too, after I get done talking and send it so, out. So I know, I know the answer. It is only supported on Fermi. OK. That's, that's my uh, guess, probably. There's probably a reason I we will, didn't do I will it before. Uh, probably our supervisors will buy us for me, now that he commented. OK. OK, so um, C++ features. Um, we've been in a kind of awkward middle ground for a while um, that, that a lot of things mostly worked, but not completely. Uh, so we couldn't really say we're there. But now we really officially support uh, inheritance and, and templates. And uh, we're, we're getting more and more pieces that are really re reliable. Uh, and again, I, I just want to provide the, uh, the caveat that, that uh, you know, C++ is a very high level programming environment. And it, it allows you to attach lots of, lots of baggage to the things that you're doing for ease of structuring your code. It's, it's uh, not always the most efficient way. And in the uh, massively parallel computing environment, where you're multiplying what you do by um, 30,000, news and deletes and malics and freeze at very high frequency are just going to clobber your performance. So you want to do these kind of things at a per application frequency, not a fine grained per thread kind of frequency. Uh, so uh, there's a little complexity with the uh, heterogeneous nature of, of CUDA with the CPU and the GPU. So if you want all your methods to run on the device, you should compile them all to run on the uh, device. Some of the clever things that, that people do uh, with dynamic linking uh, may not work. We may not be able to figure out what you're trying to do. Uh, so don't get, don't get too cute. And not everything that you write for a CPU can run on a, on a GPU. You know, we can't open windows or sockets or anything like that because we're not running an OS. OK. Uh, CUDA Fortran uh, has been a very successful partnership where, uh, where we helped, but we didn't do, have to do all the heavy lifting our, ourselves. Uh, you write your both the host and the GPU code in, in Fortran. And it ends up uh, feeling pretty much like, like CUDA C. Uh, and uh, it's very strongly typed in terms of location. And so there's no allocation or deallocation. And, and transfers happen by assignments. 
which is kind of a nice model. It'd be interesting to build a build C that, that looks kind of like that. Uh, and uh, there's some high-level tools uh, also from uh, PGI uh, that, that kind of make it a little easier to, to, uh, to develop in that environment. Uh, uh, wait till you get the microphone. <laughs> Uh, while that's turning on, I have uh, another question from online. Okay. Are there, is there, or are there any plans to provide an API to access hardware performance counters? Obviously, you have tools like the CUDA profiler and Nexus to gather performance data, but what API are they using underneath, and can we get at it? So um, we do provide an API for accessing performance counters, and it's available to, to tool developers. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure, but I think you actually can get access to, to a lot of that data if, just if you're a registered developer. Usually the answer to, can I get blah, 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 is be a registered developer and then ask for it. But I don't see any reason why we, we wouldn't make that available. Okay. Yep. So, uh, do, are you aware what uh, CUDA C features are missing in the CUDA Fortran? Uh, what CUDA C features are missing in CUDA Fortran? In, in the previous slide, you had no. Uh, it's not our product, so uh, you should look at the PGI link, and I'm sure that they describe it. Okay. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go through the next few slides fairly quickly so I can have at least a few minutes to talk about the, the futures. Uh, we have uh, uh, support for, for GDB. Uh, uh, slide says it's currently in beta. I think it's actually out now. Um, but it's uh, integrated on all uh, Linux distributions that we support, and it's pretty much what you'd expect. You can do breakpoints, single stepping, inspecting things. Uh, and uh, it, it's a little slow now. We'll improve the performance. And uh, we also don't give you visibility all the way to the assembly code. But, but we're going to add that. Uh, so here's a, here's a view of it. And um, we have a, a memcheck uh, utility, which detects and tracks uh, memory errors, such as out of bounds and misaligned uh, accesses. And that's integrated uh, and also supported on, on other uh, platforms. Uh, for uh, hardware profiling, we have uh, hardware counters, and the granularity is it's counted per, per multiprocessor, and then we give a, a full GPU view from that. Uh, we can time a lot of things, and it's not a software timer, it's a hardware timer, so it's, it's perfectly accurate to within a cycle. Uh, and uh, there's a profiler that's, that's part of the driver so that it's available uh, everywhere always. And you can enable and disable it um, and, and uh, log to file. Um, there's, uh, there's a limited number of counters per run. Uh, so the tools allow you to observe more things than that. And, uh, and the um, tool automatic will, will do multiple runs and, and capture the, all the data. And we'll add more and more counters with each generation. It's something we've just started doing. But our goal is to make the hardware totally observable so we can figure out exactly what's going on in any situation. Uh, we have Visual Profiler, uh, which is uh, supported on, on all OSs with the toolkit. And um, as I mentioned, it'll automatically run as many times as it needs to to get all the counter information. Uh, and derives various measures from the things that it counts. And then it can do all the usual things, visual plots and, and all that. Uh, our highest level, most powerful development environment is uh, Parallel Insight, which is integrated with Visual Studio and uh, integrated with the full IDE. So there is full project build, all the other stuff that you expect from, from uh, Visual Studio. Uh, it runs only on Microsoft OSs and only with the latest Visual Studio. Um, and it's really, um, I think, quite powerful. Um, you, can, you can do live debugging on the same workstation if you have two GPUs or remotely. You can connect to it across the network. Uh, 
so this is actually hardware debugging. It, it runs directly on the GPU. There's no emulation on the CPU. And so far, it only supports the CUDA C and HLSL. And again, provides exactly what you'd expect from a debugger. Um, and and all, all in hardware. This is very fast and quite slick. Uh, it also has a bunch of uh, analysis tools. Uh, and this comes from a suite of tools we've had for a long time for the graphics community that lets you keep track of what the CPU and GPU are doing. Uh, so you can kind of uh, visually look at everything. So I'm just going to flip through this pretty quickly because I'm actually not that facile with it. But there's an enormous amount of information, and it's presented graphically. You can drill down. You can uh, page through different parts, and you can get a really good view of what's happening inside the GPU and where you're spending your time. So the summary at, at the high level, um, we're, we're really trying to fill out the depth and breadth of the tool ecosystem so that it's easy for people to, to pick up and, and get good code in CUDA. So you all have these slides. I'm not going to go over where, where all these things are, but there's a bunch of stuff that you can, you can find online. And so uh, in my last few minutes, I'm going to talk about futures for GPUs uh, in very general terms. And, and I can answer a few questions if you want more specifics. I might answer. Uh, so Moore's Law continues at some level. Uh, the part that continues is we get more transistors. We continue to get twice as many transistors every 18 months, so that's good. Uh, one thing that's slightly less good is uh, clock rates are not going to scale the way they used to. Um, that's purely physics. As we get to smaller and smaller geometries, we have uh, leakage and, and uh, other uh, very fine physical properties don't scale the same way. Uh, so one of the things uh, that that leads to is uh, we actually will have to stay at the same power level. Uh, we fit in the same boxes in the same way, with the same cooling, with the same power supply. So GPUs are going to continue to have about the same peak power that they've had, no more, no less. So we have to get cleverer with how we use these additional uh, transistors. So some of the ways that we'll get uh, more clever is uh, being more parallel. Uh, the easiest way to use twice as many transistors is twice as many processors. Uh, more threads, more functional units per SM, so more, more floating point throughput, uh, more double precision throughput, whatever it is that people need. Uh, and the more abilities to run multiple kernels, multiple constructs, multiple things at the same time collaborating. Uh, and that'll lead to, uh, to a more uh, flexible and powerful programming model. Um, so uh, more resources per thread and more resources per block. I think everybody always wants more registers. So uh, 